Christ New Beginning and of course an opportunity to have a clean slate. It's a miraculous day through which Christ has been able to embolden us and of course giving us the key to what? To life. So happy Easter to you my Christian faithfuls and of course the essence of piety is meant to be observed on a day such as this. However, it wouldn't discourage us from talking about issues in the Nigerian polity, whether we like it or not. That is basically what the conversation is all about. The political spotlight, we get to shed light on issues across every segment of the Nigerian political landscape as it affects you and I. And of course, I usually have analysts in the studio who will help give us a broadened analysis of these issues. All right. And then, of course, definitely which will form your comprehension or your opinion. And of course, we'll open the phone lines for you to be part of the conversation. So we actually stream live whenever we do any program right here on Voice of the People 90.3 FM. I would implore you to actually be part of the conversation. You can virtually watch us by subscribing to our YouTube channel at VOP 903 FM. All right, VOP 903 FM. Now for a lot of you who want to start, you know, telling us what you think based on the conversation we're having, you can actually start sending your messages on WhatsApp. I will not open the phone lines now, but you can start sending your messages right on time. Let's know what you think on the conversation we're having. If you agree or if you disagree, or if you have more to add to what the analysts will say. And the WhatsApp number is 81 717 That is the whatsapp number for you to start you know sending your comments or your suggestions on the conversation we'll be having this evening or your recommendation as well you can also follow me on youtube at stick media on youtube that's e s t i q m e d i a there's quite a lot of content in there to help you know give you that content crave for a lot of you who actually crave content right on there you definitely get a satisfaction of what you desire Okay, so apparently a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, Yekini Nabene, has reacted to the alleged threats by Northerners to work against President Tinibu in the 2027 presidential election. Nabena, in an interview with uh, an online newspaper, noted the Northerners are reportedly planning to work against the second term of President Tinubu because they feel superior to others. According to Nabane, the Northerners should stop threatening other parts of the country because they are not the only ones in the country. I'm going to read out one quote he says. He says, you see, that is what I said, that some people feel they are more superior to others we are in this same country where all appointments are concentrated in one place. They did not complain and they are also still benefiting from the current system more than any other part of the country. Yes, Tinubu is appointing people from the southwest and also appointing from the north. How many appointments has he given to people from the south-south, apart from the statutory ones? The south-south has not benefited from crucial appointments like the head of Nimasa. So, again, Nabena is saying that who told the northerners that they are more superior than others? Now, you know that this conversation is not today. The northerners have kept on saying that um, they feel, based on the promises during the campaign, that President Tinubu reeled out to them, that he's not fulfilling his obligations in that regard, and they do not trust him. Secondly, you also saw where some departments and agencies were you know, being relocated to Lagos, and they said, wow, critical agencies, critical parastatals are now being sent to Lagos or relocated to Lagos. And so they are saying, is this a strategy of the president appointing his boys in, in sensitive positions as well as, you know, turning the whole country to Lagos, literally having to divert most of the attractive locations or agencies and parastatals, making Lagos to become their headquarters. So these formed a couple of opinions about uh, this current administration and President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's style of leadership. But the APC supporters have said that is not true and that they do not believe in what some of the northern elders and traditional rulers are saying. We've actually talked about this uh, for, you know, I think almost a month now when a lot of traditional rulers were making derogatory statements against President Bola Tinubu and his administration. Now, let's not go too far. Another sector that actually got, would I say, a lot of people talking in the political arena is the Labour Party. Now, the Labour Party has been confronted with a lot, a lot of challenges, internal wranglings. Now, you remember the Arabambi and uh, Namidia Papa faction, right? Well, a lot at the time we felt there were stooges being used by the opposition to create that disruption within the Labour Party. But now, this is amongst the Labour Party individuals. 
This is amongst themselves and is, is generated a lot of concern across board. The party is meant to represent change. It's meant to represent something that is different from a normal political culture. It was meant to be a, a, a different offshoot or a pinnacle of hope. Something quite out of the norm, all right? A, what you would call a positive anomaly in our political structure. But it seems the party is already beginning to act like the predominant op uh, political parties like the PDP and the APC. It feels like greed has come into play here. Money has um, played a crucial role of blindsiding, you know, some members within the party of what the original concept that the Labour Party is meant to represent. And I will not lie to you, it's making the party become, let's say, less famous. And so the Labour Party needs to do something about it. And that was basically where some internal wranglings came to limelight. Now, there was a convention that was held in Anambra and journalists were barred from being part of the convention. Even some Labour Party members couldn't be part of it. And um, apparently, INEC also dissociated itself from it because it said they lacked protocol. Now, based on the Electoral Act, if you want to hold a constitution or rather a convention, you need to give INEC about 21 days awareness ahead. 21 days ahead prepare them so they know okay this is basic this is basically what the modus operandi is when you want to organize a convention but that did not take place just two days you say you're inviting INEC to come and observe a convention and even the convention wasn't statutorily agreed right with the board of trustee members and after all of that and Julio Saburi was re-elected the board of trustees are now the ones in charge of the management organization and happenings within the Labour Party so because of all of this, people were asking questions, where is Peter Ruby? Where are you to address these issues? How do you resolve the problem? This may not help your political career in 2027. That also formed the meeting on X that Peter Obi had with obedience. And he was able to address most of these anomalies and speculations that were rife across several media platforms. One of the speculations that were rife was that Peter Obi was uh, leaving the Labour Party to the Social Democratic Party. This allegation was made by Daniel Boala, the spokesperson to Atiku Abubakar in the 2023 presidential elections. And of course, uh, there were also other speculations that oh, Peter Obi may leave Labour Party to form another party maybe an obedient party or different party entirely there are several speculations on that bio nanoga too has made some referencing to uh peter Obi's mannerism he literally called the obedience uh ethnic and religious bigots you may you may you may consider that statement this was during an interview with uh Sean okimbaloye on his micon podcast lately most of the, will I say, political stalwarts grace his Micon podcast and we're able to hear critical thoughts, critical conversations on things across the polity. So let's see um, basically what it means. Now, apparently, they're saying that the APC is the one responsible for the political crisis within the Labour Party. Is that true? Based on what you've been hearing and what you have observed, do you think is the APC that is responsible for the internal rimbrogli within the Labour Party? All right, so the Deputy National Chairman of the Labour Party, Ayo Oloron Femi, has blamed the APC for the crisis rocking the party. Oloron Femi, in an interview, said the ruling party is afraid of the growing strength and popularity of the Labour Party. And he added that the APC is the one sponsoring propaganda against the Labour Party National Chairman, Julian Saburi, in order to destabilize the party ahead of the 2027 general elections. There are also other speculations rife that Julia Saburi may actually suspend Peter Obi from the Labour Party, which of course was addressed in the uh, Twitter, or rather X hangout that Peter Obi had with obedience. He was able to address all of these and called it mere speculations that he is indeed still part of the Labour Party, told the obedience to continue to remain steadfast and told them that they actually won the elections. Well, I want us to listen to this Micon podcast with uh, Sean Okimbaloye, where my, um, Onanuga, Bayo Onanuga was also in that conversation. And I want us to hear, well, have, have a tidbit of some of his thoughts or ideas on what he thinks about, um, you know, Peter Ruby and the obedience. Let, let's just briefly take a listen to that. I think that will help strongly help contextualize the next conversation that we're going to have. People are not perceptive. Uh, up to now, some people are still writing that Bellatin Bush stole the presidency. 
Some people are saying the man who came third actually won the election. And they are very unapologetic about that. That when, how could somebody who, who came third, how could he have won that election? How could he have won it? It's just sometimes some of those things they say, they, they just, they, in fact, they, 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 you cannot even really understand the basis of it. A third in a race, the man who came third, you are still saying up to now that he actually won the election. You are still saying Bola Tinubu stole the presidency. How? How did he steal it? And people, you can see, we see when they were talking about the Naira, uh, some people were just happy that the Naira was going downhill, and so I said, and you can stress them. There are people who are saying so are members of the obedient movement. So you think that the obedient movement wants the Tunubu government to fail? Of course it's clear. Everything the government has done, even Peter Obi himself, read his tweets. Read his tweets. When government has done something good, he will never comment about it. But when it is bad news, quickly, he will tweet. So you can see a deliberate attempt to, to denigrate the government, to paint it black all the time that it's not doing well, it's a failure. And I said, it's too early to even say so. If Tinubu has a four-year mandate, he has just started. And I, I, I'm, I'm very, very sure that they'll be, they'll be shamed by the time this man finishes his time. In, in terms of what he wants to do, what he wants to accomplish for this government. He's a man who said, is he, is he here as president to leave a legacy? And that people will begin to see what he's trying to do. You don't think that the, pres uh, the Tinubu government has its failings already? In some areas, which feelings? I say that's just begun. Uh, you can I mean, you can misstep. Any human being can. Any government can. Any entity, any institution can have a misstep. Can have a mistake. No, no. But the ability this, to be able this, to retrace is this, one thing. This government, this government has 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 been very fortunate that when it makes a mistake, it says, "Oh, sorry, we made a mistake," and it resets its steps. It does not just go on and say, "Oh." Because we've made this, we're not going to correct. It's do a self-correction and then set things right. That's what this government has been doing. Mm. The president has said, I'm not to say, look, I can make myself a human being. I can make errors. But once it's, the errors are spotted, he corrects himself. And there are several instances where the government have backtracked on, uh, has backtracked on some of his policies and decisions. And there are those who believe that these are too many times of a government backtracking on policies, which makes the government look like it doesn't really understand what it's up to. Don't forget that we, when you are in government, or you maybe you are fashioning out economic policies or social policies, you are dealing with human beings. And then, and this, this is, of course, in, in school they taught us that social science is not, or behavioral science is not, is not, is not real science. So errors are bound to be made. But I said the good thing about this government, about this president, is that when he makes errors, he corrects the errors. Hmm. Like for instance, recently there was this thing about uh, expatriate levy or something, and people pointed out to him, these are the problems about this policy. And government said, no, no, hold it. Don't do it again. So that's the kind of presidency we have. Always ready to correct himself. That was uh, by Nanoga that you just listened to on the Micron podcast. That was just an excerpt. It was quite a lengthy 
conversation but you heard him say uh, that he believes that peter ruby was the one who promoted religious and ethnic sentiments i don't know how that is possible and i don't know how peter ruby was able to do that he also said that peter ruby never promotes any positive thing about the administration of president bola Tinubu. in fact there are others uh, they they say that Peter Obi only thrives to talk about negative things, to criticize the government only on negativity, but never comments the government on any good or possible possible uh, endeavors that the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been able to implement. And that to him, he feels that that is just somebody who is reigning in on division, trying to use division to curry the favor of a lot of people. Well, that statement was debunked by Peter Obi on uh, X on Friday evening. He said he has never ever promoted disunity and his philanthropic att attribute or attitude has been something he's been known for even before he joined politics. So him having to help, him having to provide assistance, encourage is something that has been part of his personal life is an attribute that even before he joined politics is what he's known for he's not doing it to curry any favor and it's not a 2027 uh, agenda sort of however he told the obedience that they won and that 2027 they should also look ahead of it meanwhile the labor party deputy national chairman ayo lauren femi shared his insights regarding the ongoing calls for the resignation of the party's national chairman julia saburi by the nigeria labor congress leadership alongside other pressing issues within the party uh, we know that since the conclusion of the 2023 general elections the labor party has found itself embroiled in a protracted leadership crisis and so, when asked to evaluate the root cause of the crisis, Alara Femi highlighted a complex interplay beyond the dominant political forces, which represents, you know, the APC, the People's Democratic Party, and the Labour Party itself, which has been a battleground for individuals leveraging its strength for personal political gains, which is what a lot of people are talking about. When did the Labour Party, which was supposed to be the beacon, of the common man a change in the political stratosphere becomes something that is only politically personally inclined so that's a conversation that we'll also be looking to here in the studio with my analyst i also want us to listen to kenneth okonkwa uh he actually had an interview recently on a, a rice television with um during their prime time and basically the labor party is what was talked about the convention that was recently held, INEC dissociating itself, Julius Abura as a person, um, his own political, would I say, experience as well as his, uh, would I say, forthrightness when it comes to his personal agenda, when it comes to politics. And of course, the political party's uh, 2023 presidential representative, Peter Orby. Let's just take a brief listen to Kenneth Okonkwa. Does legally speaking and constitutionally speaking there's no national working committee in its entirety and i'm talking about the constitution the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria 1999 as amended section 223 he made it clear that the constitution of every party must have in it provisions and rules that must enable the election of its members on democratic basis and it made it clear that the democratic basis means they will not exceed four years right two to three one a two a and if you exceed four years what it means strictly speaking is that there is vacancy mm. completely and it's constitutional and again you can't sit down and go to social media and conduct a convention and you call it a national convention no that's a social media convention well even beyond that INEC yes. has dissociated itself but from INEC that should. convention and yeah. what they did is quite legal right. and constitutional section 82 Subsection 1 of the Electoral Act mm. made it clear before you do any convention, you must give INEC 21 days notice. And 82.5 made it clear that any convention done without such notice is invalid. INEC is not your football. 
you can't wake up two days and you tell them you're giving them notice for an, a convention that will be happening in your backyard and you want them to come i mean are they just us this is a constitutional body and it's a creature of the law i've always talked about rule of law i am going to side anywhere law is siding and you know it is pathetic and it hurts me when i read article 8 three of the Labour Party constitution that said the objective is to create a new Nigerian mm. personality that is patriotic, altruistic, transparent, and committed to due process and rule of law in all spheres of our national life. And then somebody wants to be the national chairman and you cannot be transparent in a little thing as in convention and let me tell you another thing well before you go ahead it sounds very clearly like you don't support julia sabure who's the who was the chairman of the party labor party is a creation of the law she has nothing to do with abure did they follow due process no i have nothing personal against abure i'm possibly one of the people that have defended him most but when I was defending him, he was within the foundation of the institution of Labour Party. That as long as you continue to do things in order, you will be my friend. Mm. Immediately you disobey the law. You know, Peter B will tell you, if you want to be His Excellency, the manner and the procedure that brings you to power must be excellent. I find this national convention less than excellent. And my principle is committed to due process and rule of law. That's why Nigerians, you know, moved up to him. Mm. And you cannot expect the platform that he will be in not to follow his footsteps. Well, I'm going to come to that, your principle, in a moment. But Good. lots of allegations against Julia Sabure, including mismanagement, and I emphasize allegations. Yes. Mismanagement, corruption, suggestions. He wants to take over the Labour Party. What's your reaction to all that? Do those allegations have merit? I mean, you're a member of the party. In politics perception is very important i am following p2b because nobody has even made an allegation against him he has been a governor for eight years has been a chairman of the bank has held offices of trust as a matter of fact in page 61 of ngozi okonjo iwala's book ngozi okonjo iwala the wto director general said he was the only governor that was crying that we must be saving something when we had excess you know crude reserves if we had saved something you know where would have been as a country now you are the chairman of a political party of such a man and the renegade group that started this accused you or alleged you forged something. The former national chairman of the party, a woman, alleged that you forged something. Your national treasurer alleged that you forged something. NLC alleged that you forged something. Everybody, the candidates that were in for the election in 2023 under Labour Party. Some of them alleged you forged something. The perception is simply, the optics is simply not good. Hmm. If I were him, I would have used this opportunity to rest, to take a leave, so that all these allegations would take a leave. Hmm. Because in Nigeria, knowing what Nigeria is, if he has honorably stepped down those allegations will honorably step down but now he has subjected himself to going to face the consequences of what he did i never i never defended anybody who offends the law but let me ask you this though. Yes. is is the problem right now in the labor party julius Abure. I'm trying to assess how dire the situation is. I mean, is it just him or is it politicians, members of the unions, belly aching about something or nothing? Or is the subtext clear? The level of despair now pretty obvious? I mean, somebody said 
in their competence they're masking their incompetence. I mean, blurring the vision of the entire country. Is it that bad or is it just Julius Aburi? Because, well, I'm happy as you, you said, you use the yes. word optics. It's sending yes, the, the optics wrong optics to the country. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you made mention of the union. Mm. Let me admit that the union is a very, very important stakeholder of Labour Party. Right. But let me make it clear. And this is where I think they exceeded their boundary. Labour Party is not owned by the union. Labour Party, by Section 77 of the Electoral Act, is a body corporate with perpetual succession and a common seal that can sue and be sued in its name. So nobody owns a body corporate. Mm -hmm. Once you register a political party, just like even the ordinary limited liability company, has a life of its own. Mm -hmm. Good. In section 222 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, any association that is not open to the membership of every citizen of Nigeria cannot be called a political party. So the members of Nigeria who are members, the citizens of Nigeria who are members of Labour Party, they are the ones who govern Labour Party through their management of Labour Party. So nobody owns any political party. Political party has a life of its own. But they may be the founder. Mm. Just like you have founders of EDP, <laughs> APC, some of them that the names are even there may have even relocated to another party. Mm. And that does not make the party dead or anything. So I agree there are important stakeholders. But please, they should refrain from using the word that they own Labour Party. Labour Party constitution is different from NLC constitution. Mm. So by virtue of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, once INEC registers a political party, the membership is very clear. They have to file the register of the members of the political party, file their constitution, file any alteration of the constitution, and once it's done, it becomes a body corporate. So nobody owns Labour Party. That's a very important. People are not present. To just listen to an interview with Kenneth Okonkwa uh, on one of the with one of the presenters on a monitor television program. I wanted us to take a listen to that. This week has actually been more about uh, the Labour Party and the crisis within the Labour Party. So it happens to be that most of the con uh, controversies surrounding the political uh, arena or the political landscape centered on the Labour Party and a lot was divulged when Peter Obi had would I say a conversation on X with the obedience but he said something he debunked the rumors that he is you know having to migrate to the Social Democratic Party the SDP you remember that Daniel Boala made such an allegation that Peter Obi is uh, has uh, has the intention to leave the Labour Party to the Social Democratic Party Peter Obi has, you know, discontinued or discountenanced that particular speculation and said it is wrong that he is still an intricate member of the Labour Party. However, he also backed for a call, all right, for a proper structure of the obedient movement, which is the name of his followers. Now, a lot of political elites say that the obedient movement are usually very aggressive. Uh, they're ethnos, you know, ethnocentric. They are quite erratic. If you say anything or disagree with any opinion of any obedient, you become a, a you become a person that they would insult and ridicule. A lot of people say that um, the obedient movement may be the ones to rupture the political ambition of Peter Obi because of how aggressive they are towards anyone who opposes the ideals 
of Peter Obi, not the Labour Party, but the ideals of Peter Obi. They tend to get very personal in anything that has to do with anything Peter Obi says. And they say that they are quite toxic. So when you go on X and you see conversations, before you know, it becomes a religious back and forth or it becomes a tribal back and forth. So Peter Obi is saying that the obedient movement needs to gain structure and that the reason why he ignored the party's national convention in Anambra State is under Julius Aburi was because there was a failure. Julius Aburi failed to consult widely with key party stakeholders before embarking on it. And that was why the board of trustees came on board. So you, you, you actually listened to um, Kenneth Okonkwa actually making the same a reference to what Peter Ruby said as to why he stayed away from the national convention that took place in Anambra State three or four days ago. Another conversation I also want us to listen to that you know gave me that mind boggling, uh, thought provoking trance is a situation with um, President Bola Ahmed Tunibu in the United States. So the U.S. House of Representatives have reportedly advanced resolution to increase sanctions on Nigeria over the persecution of Christians in the country. The Nigerian government has pleaded with the United States of America to shield the resolution by its House of Representatives seeking to designate Nigeria as a country of concern over allegations of religious intolerance. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Yusuf Toga, made the appeal on Wednesday when President Bola Tinubu received a delegation from the United States Congress led by Senator Cory Booker at the State House in Abuja. And the House of Representatives had reportedly advanced its resolution to increase sanctions on Nigeria. That is because Nigeria is being recognized for years by religious rights groups as one of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a Christian. The House Foreign Affairs Committee advanced a resolution to increase sanctions and pressure on the Nigerian government over the rampant persecution of Christians and other modalities in the country. Meanwhile, the U.S. House Rep. Chris Smith was the one who sponsored the bill, and the resolution is meant to call on President Joe Biden or the United States administration to designate Nigeria a country of particular concern, a designation that comes with additional sanctions. So if Nigeria is meant to be any part of whatever benefits whatsoever from the United States or the European Union, we may not benefit from it if we're placed as a country or tagged as a country of particular concern just because of some um, the statement of the fact that when it comes to Christians, they're highly persecuted in this part of the world. Well, the president and his team are trying to plead with the United States government for that resolution not to be passed, whereby Nigeria will be banned or dissociated or isolated from some benefits with the United States or the European Union or any of the organizations that helps to provide aid to countries, specifically African countries, that need their help. Okay, so I've said quite a lot. Let me introduce my analyst in the studio so we can diverse these issues and we can open the phone lines for you to be part of the conversation. Right now, I have right here Mr. Elvis Elimehele. He's a journalist of over three decades. Uh, he's here in the studio to help shed light on the issues we'll be discussing this evening. Mr. Elvis Elimehele, good evening and welcome to the political spotlight. Uh, good evening, Esther. Good evening, our listeners. Thank you and, for joining uh, happy us. Happy Easter to everybody in the world today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Easter to you too. All right. And then, of course, my next guest is Barry Sajowo Kendi. He's a political national and social affairs commentator and, of course, a practicing legal practitioner. Mm -hmm. Because there are some legal practitioners by name, but they're no longer practicing. Barry Sajowo is still a cop going lawyer. Barry Sajowo Kendi, good evening and welcome to the Political Spotlight. Good evening, our listeners. I wish all of you a blissful Easter celebration. All right. Thank you for joining me this mm -hmm. evening. And uh, once again, I want to say I'm excited that you're here. Let me start off with the burglary within the Labour Party. Mr. Elvis, I'll start off with you. I'd like us to be as, you know, you know, brisk as possible so we can cover all the areas. What do you think about the situation with the Labour Party and the several speculations rife across several media channels on what Peter Obi should do or should not do? And the conversation he had on X with obedience. Do you agree that the obedience are to toxic based on what Bayon Anuga has said, based on what other political opponents have said, uh, Dan Obala too has said? Uh, Bayon Anuga literally stated that accused Peter Obi of the one sponsoring dissent within the, you know, with the obedience against uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's uh, administration. What do you take on that? 
Well, I want to first of all comment the that um, ex conversation uh, His Excellency Peter will be had with the obedient mm. on Friday. It was a good one. All right. Because there were so many things that were flying. Yes. You know, left, right, center mm -hmm. that he needed to address. First of all, you know, he was not in the Anambra uh, convention. convention, you know. And uh, again, the Bayo Ananuga came and mm -hmm. started saying, um, you see, one thing about APC, APC do not want anybody to criticize whatever they are doing. Mm. But they have forgotten that they came into government in 2015 through criticism. They practically pulled Jonathan's government down, you know, made it, you know, gave it different names mm. for people, you know, to jettison uh, PDP and picked up APC at then, uh, thinking that we've arrived mm. at our uh, Eldorado. But unfortunately, this is where we are now. So I don't really want to dwell much on that because yes. Nigerians today, can actually now descend between the life we had in 2014, 2015 before APC came to government mm -hmm. and what we are currently having now since they came about nine years now, mm -hmm. they've been in power in Nigeria. So Nigerians can descend that and know we, had, we know where the shoe pitches us. But the area of Julius Abure, mm. you know, trying to drag Labour Party in the mound, I'm not too happy about it. Okay. Labour Party is a party that every one of us, Nigerians, accepted because we 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 are like labor party must live above board okay. it must not be the usual norms that we know of political party where you know so many kangaroo things go on fly left right center and we start going to tribunal tribunal because uh, there were no um in-house democracy internal democracy in picking their their members and even their candidates for their respective elections but this is what we are seeing now labor party is trying to toe the same line of this political party that have disappointed Nigerians. So I am not too happy. I expected Julius Abure to live above board with all his team. If his uh, tenor has expired and with all the allegations surrounding him, mm -hmm. you know that, I mean, uh, 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 Mr. Kenneth Okonko has mentioned some of them, I think it was better for him to have just honorably take a bow and, or, and find a way to clear his name. You know, sometimes we try to mundo up things. Look at what happened in uh, Newe, in Anambra State. Mm. How many people were there? The who is who in that party were not in that convention. And at the end of the day, uh, INEC has already said they are not part of that convention. And it's this INEC that will give approval to political party conventions for those that they feel, oh, this is genuine. Mm. So anybody now that is even coming, I mean, under the, 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 the leadership of uh, Julius Aburi to contest any election, especially now that we are talking of... Um, own the election coming up mm. and uh, an Ambra, you know, you know, also warming up. If this uh, yeah, Edo. Edo, Edo, Edo convention is already, I mean, Edo, uh, um, uh, what well, uh, primaries are is gone already, but these very ones that are coming up now, if uh, this type of convention that is not recognized by INEC, if it is conducted, if the uh, primaries are conducted under this, the 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 the, the, the well, opponent like might I, go to like, court. like if you had listened to um, the board of trustees. They refused to recognize the convention that was held in Anambra State. They said they would reschedule. They yes. would announce a new date, which, of course, a lot of people believe that well, that was the right call. But the question is this. The Labour Party seems to be, was, was supposedly meant to be a beacon of hope. Something different from our normal political party structure. Normally, you have a recycle of APC and PDP, right? Mm -hmm. But the Labour Party was supposed to be different. How did they allow greed, money, maybe the fame get them carried away because when the when the when the such light was on the party we now realize that the party is almost like a child that political maturity is not being witnessed there because you see a lot of things that could be internally resolved i'm not saying the apc or the pd will not have their own issues but the, fa the fact is you have serious opponents who were surprised that you became a third force and even those who became, um, what do you call, lawmakers and senators and House of Representative members, nobody's hearing their voice. A lot of people are, are kind of disappointed with some of them that got those positions. They expected them to be more vocal. They expected them to shake the house. You know, that was what they wanted them to do. But they're quiet. It almost seems like they, they were they merged with the APC and the PDP like they were normal there. They don't talk. They don't say anything. Rather, they seem to show more support with the APC, that's the All Progressives Congress Party. So, which breaks to mind? Those who are asking, specifically some obedience, who want Peter Ruby to dissociate himself from the Labour Party and possibly form a political party, 
would you say they're making the right call or they're asking for the right d- different direction that will redirect the focus of the Labour Party, or sorry, of Peter Obi for 2027? No, you know, you know, Esther, to form a political party that will have that national spread mm. is not an easy thing. Okay. You see, I'm not, I'm not advising uh, Peter Obi to, you know, leave Labour Party. Okay. I'm expecting Peter Obi to bring in his leadership acme. All to right. settle every trouble that is in Labour Party, that will give him another plus mm. in what Nigerians already know him for. Okay. Because leaders are meant to solve problems, not to run from problems. So if Peter Obi can actually bring all these crises in Labour Party to 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 success, and everybody now begins to governize around Labour Party again, mm-hmm. it will also add to his CV politically. So he should stay and solve the problem. Then again, the obedience. You know, also have to work with him. Mm. Obedient have to, act, since they've already agreed that this is somebody that they believe in and they can follow him. Okay. Just like what happened in Senegal, the youth believe that this is our person. They followed and they saw what happened in Senegal mm-hmm. last weekend. So people like uh, the obedience in Nigeria should be able to also, you know, key into whatever the uh, uh, obese uh, ob- uh, ob- decisions and mm. structure to be able to move Labour Party. Uh, what is happening in Labour Party is just the normal greed that is associated with Nigerian politicians. That's First of all, sit, sit, uh, sit tight syndrome. That's the reason why you are seeing that Abure is still dragging to remain as chairman. You have, I mean, you haven't gotten this glory that will be brought into the Labour Party under your leadership. Mm-hmm. That's enough for you to have left the stage. They said, learn to quit the stage when the ovation is latest. Everybody will remember him. Oh, he was the chairman of Labour Party during the time Peter will be contested presidential election in 2023. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. But now, look at. At the end of the day, maybe probably they, they, are, they are in court and all everything he has been struggling to get yes. by force mm. is already taken out of him, literally. He is going to buy us shamefully and that will not help him. So at a particular time when you know that people are still with you, learn to leave, clear your name, you know, and support whoever is coming in so that the party, what you believe in, we must be able to carry it forward mm. and make it successful. You believe in the success of the Labour Party. Supposing the Labour Party won 2023 general election, is it what we are going to be seeing in the Labour Party? Exactly. First of all, that they cannot mend their home. Mm-hmm. And how would they be would that been able to support the leadership of President Obi if Obi was the president of president, Nigeria? Sure. Because the, it's, it, I mean, it's already in Tatars now. Sure. You know, we you remember we still have a papa, yes, uh, a, a, a papa's mm-hmm. uh, fashion that is still going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was seeing their PRO uh, mm-hmm. Arabambi on, on the screen, one of the television stations about two days ago. Mm-hmm. And look at what he was saying. Same. He has practically been turning Labour Party like it's an Igbo party. He's coming mm-hmm. to mention that in the national television. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the things that Labour Party must be able to pull themselves out of it. They're coming to talk of their legislators. Esther, I'm completely disappointed with some of their, with all their legislators, mm-hmm. especially in the National Assembly. Who were expecting to see a difference? First of all, they got into the National Assembly. They came into the courtesan that is the National Assembly that we have ever known mm. since 1990 to the present day. That is sharing and continue to share. We saw when email were being sent to uh, the prayers. Prayers, prayers and prayers and prayers and email Money we were being sent. They were part of it. Mm-hmm. We saw when when the 160 and they million did not SUV that. came in. They were they, they part didn't of oppose it. it. Today you cannot even hear anything about it has to do with Labour Party uh, 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 legislators in the National Assembly. Assembly. They completely sealed up. Two days ago, we saw six members of Labour Party in Enugu State House of Assembly. They went back to where they are coming from. Exactly. PDP. PDP. Just to tell you that they just ride on that name, mm. obedient and uh, uh, because uh, they were famous yes, at the time. Obi- they wanted to get political appointments. Just because of obese mm. uh, uh, popularity, they just ride on it. No politicians are very smart. I keep mm-hmm. on telling you, they ride on it to get into uh, get what they are looking for because mm. they know they will not be able to get it from their party at that moment. Then now they are going back to where they are coming from. So all these are some of the things that. One of the reasons why the Labour Party must, you know, made his own, made his own for me, they both, so that they can check all these rag tags that are pulling down their names. If they don't check it, they are ready to, they are ready to destroy the party. The same way we now have uh, uh, PDP. You know, there was time we have new PDP and no PDP mm-hmm. that, that that made them to lose the election in 2014. You know, when some of them, some of their governors and legislators have to start leaving PDP, we also have it again. Even even this, the ruling party now has its own. So if the Labour Party cannot, you know, come up with an example, I know that they are going to, they are living above board for Nigeria to actually buy into that credibility and begin to see OB as a statue, as a statue that, no, this man can actually deliver. 2027 is just, is just at, 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 at the doorpost. Hmm. Before you know, more crisis will come in. By 2027, 
they will not even be able to have a candidate because there will be so many court cases, there will be so many fashion. And they will be and, distracted and, and, and be from distracted having to form and, a strategy. And, yes. and at the end of the day, when uh, a, a candidate comes from one's fashion mm -hmm. and the other one comes from that, they will go to court. And court will say, oh, this is not the right candidate. This is it. And when you now begin to go to court because what you have settled in-house, mm -hmm. you cannot settle it. That's why we are not telling, calling on judiciary. We are not giving judiciary names. First of all, we, are, we didn't respect ourselves. If you don't fight and you don't go to a police station, the police is not coming to your house to pick you. Right? That's true. They will not come. But by That's the time you not take yourself to the police station, then you get to court. Then everybody is not like judiciary. It is because the political parties are not doing their job mm -hmm. effectively. If the political parties actually know what it means, political parties' definition that people with the same ideology, mm. the same ideology, live together to say, oh, this is our aim. This is our objective. That's how it's supposed to be. But in a political party now, we are seeing more crises. Within the political parties, torn within apart. Within the space of nine months, yes, ten months. Yes, and at the end of the day, these are people that are supposed to pick leaders for the nation. If they cannot even settle their home, how do you pick leaders for the nation? Well, well, one can even say this is what affected them during the tribunal, yeah, you know, post-election. You know, because the at the time... At the time, we're having a papa coming yes, to court. Yes, exactly. That will remember the incident mm -hmm. that happened in the court that some, a papa, people, some, some guys even removed cap from his exactly, and all that. Exactly. These were issues. So, so it, 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 it distracted the party from having yes. to do what it needs to do. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barrister Joe Nwokedi, let me come to you because I really need you to help me contextualize this. Now, there are, you know, Political opponents say that the obedience will be the downfall of Peter Ruby. I don't know how often that you participate on X. Uh, X is a platform where people get to communicate real time on anything trending. And um, sometimes you see some ethnic rife statement, which is actually bad, basically between supporters of the APC and supporters of Peter Ruby. They say the obedience are toxic. If you say anything that is, that is not in connivance with what you know the obedience want or what peter b represents they curse you they abuse you i also want to take you back to during post-election just immediately after the elections when the case was at the tribunal where nobel laureate wallace shurinka referred to the supporters of the presidential candidate then P peter Ruby in 2023 he says they refused to entertain corrective criticism and he referred to them as fascists and he said that he told peter Ruby that if he is not careful that the obedience will be his downfall that will lead to his downfall now let me ask you barrister jerome wilkeddy with a lot of things that has been going on the party that peter ruby is part of the board of trust is taking charge the lamidian and arabambi faction and Bayon Anuga coming out to say that peter ruby entertained religious and ethnic sentiments do you think that the obedient movement needs to re-strategize and restructure so peter we may have a potential in 2027 a potential of support that would not be from one particular ethnic group that will be all encompassing as it was in 2023 it was not just a certain ethnic group that voted for him it, it went across well, board across. but it seems a lot of people who are no longer in a particular ethnic group are now like okay i don't understand what the obedient movement is all about i really need you to help me con see, conceptualize see, one this one thing you should know is that opposition parties will always Try to box you into okay. mm. just try to box you into what you are not doing. Who is Bayo Nanoga? Do you ever think that something good about Peter B will come out from Bayo Nanoga? Before you address issues, look at the quarters. If a neutral ground mm. is saying something about Peter B, a non-partisan person, a person of high repute that has nothing to do with election uh, politics, you know, mm. that might be politically exposed, is saying something about Peter B, I might have giving a more listening ear to yeah, that okay but coming from a partisan person someone that was so toxic during the election to do his job uh, he may mean by an no that we know his role in lagos during elections he was mm. calling names and saying people should be killed should, or should, should be destroyed or whatever at lagos he, he, he was engrossed in so many scandals mm. it was even in a, a country like nigeria that somebody would get to that level of divisive utterances during governorship election in nigeria and come out and say he has no apology for that <clears throat> and he eventually be elevated to level of spokesperson of a president and now he has the same person is criticizing p2b saying something negative and is forming basis of discussion wouldn't you even know from the quarter that a statement is coming they can't even give it any credibility mm. i never expected anything reasonable to come from by an anoga okay. even if p2b has done the best any man could do in this world Bayonanga will never appreciate it. Okay. Bayonanga will never say anything positive about it mm. because of the background he's coming from, which has been firmly established even before the election, after the election, which has been rewarded with 
and he's still hoping to be rewarded more. Mm. So why would how can he be rewarded more by still uh, 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 getting engraved in that attitude of toxic uh, to toxicity, which is what he's doing? So during uh, uh, in this issue of uh, ethnicity or whatever mm -hmm. religion came up when Peter D was running for election. And I just went beyond that. Hmm. We saw what happened in Lagos and other parts of Nigeria, yes, in the yes. and everywhere. I mean that when, when you you may say something about people, people will dissect it. People will look at it. People will review it. I know where there is merit in what you are saying. Yes. And they are, that Bayon Anuga is a member of opposition party. Exactly. So what they should do is to keep on bringing allegations. But let, allegations let, let, let me take that you will back. now make you feel like, oh, after a series of you know, conversations, it might be true. Let me take you back to a statement that is even worse, ethnically divisive, he made in 2023, March. He spoke about the fact that, um, let me quote him, let 2023 be the last time of Igbo interference yes. in Lagos politics. Mm. This was when he made a statement tweeting a photo of Peter Obi and Igbo from Anambra State who backed Badibo Roads Viva, a Yoruba from Lagos. Mr. Nanaga, of, of course, at the time is, was you know the president's top aide and he was expected to play a key role in the incoming administration. Now, nobody understands why he made that statement, but he warned, he targeted the Igbos and it caused a lot of condemnation on X and after the, the election, he said he has so, no apologies for what he has so said. exactly so when making such a statement why is he now saying peter Obi is the one causing making just, ethnic just, and religious it, it, it uh, uh, sentiments or has divisions actually, uh broken fast with some people in suleja in some northern parts mm -hmm. of and the even in Kano. and they welcome him he's not even a muslim he's not even from there trying to reach out trying to talk to so many people trying to like associate with people and try to fraternize and that's he's saying that uh, he said he has okay take for instance Tinubu is from southwest yeah. some of his uh, he won mo most of the states in southwest have you ever said that because he has majority of the support base from southwest mm -hmm. they say an, an ethnic person there are things that might be natural that might be that might have that natural inclination like it be naturally should win an embrace it is from there mm -hmm. he was the governor of that state he had more of interaction with people when he was the governor there. Yeah, true. And by the assessments, he did well. So you don't expect people from there to abandon and begin to vote for somebody from uh, uh, wherever uh, place because uh, uh, you will term it being ethnic mm. oriented. This is wrong. The, the, the environment that somebody existed mm. is the most uh, strongest bedrock that can propel that person into any electoral office. If you have done well, okay. Why Tinubu had issue in Lego because Legosians were not convinced that he did well. It wasn't the vote of even people from the southwest that that made uh, Tinubu to lose Lagos. Mm. It was basically people that critically assess leadership as a governor in Lagos and come with that kind of um, uh, outcome that he couldn't convince them. Therefore, they said to vote against him. But so, true. so and Peter being his all trances, everywhere he has gone to during campaigns has made it so clear. Don't vote for me because of where I come from. Exactly. Don't vote for me because of my religion. Vote for me because if I, if I convince you that I'm going to do it because of my antecedents, because of my past, because of my records, because of my academic capacity. But, 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 but let me let me reel you back in, right? Yeah. Um, whether we like it or not, a lot of critics will say that 2027 is still far because we don't even know who will be alive till then. Nigerians are suffering. There is hunger. Insecurity is rife. But whether we like it or not, machinations, foundation of strategy politically is already in, at play ahead of 2027. Yes. So each of these political parties are already working and maneuvering to see how they ensure that the opponent is weakened. Now, you know, one Lauren Fermi in the Labour Party is saying that APC is one causing the destabilization within the Labour Party. Now, you remember that Gandiji, whom we call Gandola, I remember then during the by off season elections, he said that the next target is to ensure that the APC has most of the southeastern states. If APC is able to have the majority of all the states, then 2027 is assured. They had already started working, even from the off season elections for 2027. Now, critics feel that the Labour Party should learn or possibly have a broader vision of you know the, how the APC is looking at things for 2027. But Peter Ruby, while he had a conversation with obedience on Friday, said that they didn't lose the elections, but they actually won because they were able to shake the polity from the norm that people were used to. That certainty that a couple of politicians thought they had 
they kind of shook that certainty. So let me, in, in that regard, where do you think Peter Obi, the Labour Party, and the obedience are getting it wrong? What would you recommend that they should do now? For me, um, I, 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 I didn't see anywhere they are doing it wrong. Okay. For me, they should do more. They should improve on what... Who? Ebudians? Peter Obi or the Labour Party? The, the, the Labour Party mm. should do more. Peter Obi should do more. Okay. And he's already doing that uh -huh. by trying to like establish friendship and fraternity within mm. the North, mm -hmm. which was not that was very, very difficult for him to like obedience to penetrate. Mm -hmm. It wasn't such an easy trend for people to, because of the peculiarity of Northern culture, Northern religion, mm -hmm. Northern history, Northern mm -hmm. world view, and so many things. So most of the things that can easily and smoothly sell in the South here may not may be, have a rough shot in the North. Okay. Except if you're able to understand their dynamics. Mm. And the time Labour Party and Peter Obedience emerged, it couldn't provide enough time All right. for them to fully decipher the best approach to approach uh, to enter into Northern uh, political domain. Okay. And then, you know, pierce and penetrate and gather enough kind of uh, is it possible to have that. a decent political party that no. will not be immersed in this kind of things no. already be dead yes, the labor party yes. now peter b has ample time to do that okay and obedience have already created a very powerful platform all right very strong platforms are cut across all over mm. in those face of nigerian political you know uh, 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 okay. climates all right what they should do now is to strengthen all those places all right and watch as government is going hmm. fill up this government with don't mind what by another guy say okay review all the projects and programs of these governments for them hmm. let people know you have better and pre a realistic alternative okay that will make things somebody was telling me that dollar is falling and we are not have to say what something that you took from 700 to one 1900 mm. you brought it down to 1003 so i should clap for you hmm. <laughs> why would I, why would I start clapping for mm. you? I said, return it to 700 where you got it. And then I will, I will realize that when you now took it down to 600, mm -hmm. 500, I will start clapping for you. So why would Nigerians be clapping when you took the to 1,009? Because now they are trying to like, you know, form the, this mental attack on people that they are doing well, mm. that dollar is this and that, you know. If you don't review their their their, their, their projects and programs and performance, right. and let people know that, look, these guys, you know, try so much on propaganda, and no matter whatever they're telling you, they are still within the purview of failure. Yes. They are failure. Forget about whatever scratch they'll have on the surface. You know, follow, follow them on uh, 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 project by project, okay. program by program, and let people understand it ahead of time. Then also de develop your, uh, a, a strategy. Like I said, the strategy that works in the southern Nigeria, I may not work in the north. Find a way to broaden your strategy. You did very well. The obedience okay. movement did very, very well. Wow. We know how many states they picked up. We know mm -hmm. even to today in river states, we knew very, very well that they won rivers. Right. We kept the abroad the robbery, took over rivers and do whatever he did there. We know how many states they gathered within six, how many months? Mm. Within two years of uh, margins. And you're telling someone that did such exploits politically that they should not, you, uh, you should go and dump that strategy and become the sign, become a, a, a star playing to the gallery, go to their rooms and relax and issue press conference and go no whatever that you did that made you to achieve milestone success in your life mm. it's not something you, you should go and change all you need to do is to find a way to do more all right labor the uh, obedient movements were aggressive they were they were industrious they were hardworking. they were determined they were patriotic they were fearless mm. They were, they, they, they were selfless. You know, they were bringing food. Out. So all these are things that are like before then unknown to Nigerian political trend. Mm. And they brought them into play. And what did we see? Results everywhere. All right. Okay. And the, most of our, there is a mistake that most of our political, you know, of, uh, 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 players usually do. They believe by capturing states, they capture presidential election. Okay. Because they so much believe that governors world enormous powers, especially by rigging elections for them. But during the last election, Aleppo had no single state it controlled. Yes. And from nowhere, how many states did Aleppo win? From nowhere, Aleppo won like, I think, eight states. No, no, not 11 states. 11. 11 states. Plus Abuja 12. From nowhere without a single government. So this Ganduje saying that uh, they have to capture the whole South is mm. capture the whole South or capture the whole Nigeria. Before APC emerged uh, 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 victorious in 2015, PDD was almost controlling 23 states in Nigeria. Hmm. 
23 states or 25 states were under PDP's control. APC won election into those PDP controlled states. states. So the uh, presidential election is quite different from gubernatorial the elections. Election. So any political any, yes, election, anybody in their own calculation thinking that we want to rig in governors everywhere mm -hmm. in the southeast or want to capture the whole southeast so it will trans translate into winning presidential election in those places, is you're wasting your time. All right, it's yes, only sir. because of the fact that we're here to get a, 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 a real free and fair election. election. If we get real, real free and fair election, we don't need any governor holding any state as executive governor of a state to win a presidential election in that state. All right. All you need to do is you are popular, you bring your manifesto, you tell people what you want to do for them, they can vast for those, you know, key into right. the needs of the people okay. and the needs of Nigerians. I All right. We'll vote for you. Mr. Elvis, let's roll back into the ruling All Progressives Congress. Uh, in as much as the Labour Party has its own quagmire, the APC2 is going through its own situation. And uh, a former Deputy National Organising Secretary of the APC, Yekini Nabena, he actually has affirmed that the crisis in the ruling party will not end, that there will never be peace in the APC. According to him, he said the way the party has been going about ruling the government is all wrong. He pointed to the fact that the current national chairman of the party, Abdullahi Ganduji, also known as Gandola, was, no, was no, not voted for and that did, he did not buy any nomination form. However, he was appointed. Nabena is adding that things are even worse when the chairman sees the position of chairmanship as compensation for not being the vice president. Do you think that this particular statement will create any fracture within the APC in as much as the party thinks they're strong and dominant and they believe certainly that 2027 they will take precedence? Yeah, I want to really give it to uh, Laji Nambela. He has mm -hmm. been very truthful in most of uh, his, his okay. uh, I mean, statements concerning uh, APC. All right. Yes, uh, each time I see him on screen, I try to evaluate most of the things he say. It comes out factual. Let me ask you, a political party chairman, are they appointed by the president? No, no, not at or all. Or is appoint, they're appointed by the National Working it's Committee? It's a convention. That's just not what we're talking about. So no, how so come the um, Gandhi, Gan who yeah. did not get the nomination form, we, but was appointed by the president, meaning he was installed there yes, as chairman of the party yes, for a without reason. any contest? Yes, for a reason. That's, that's why... The reason is just that what so is a dictatorial format yes that's what he is also i uh, mean uh, uh condemning there yeah, that uh, the way uh, ganduje came in mm. you see apc has more because one they have more to share you know where this thing first has so okay. much and uh, so much money and uh, so much power and all that there will definitely be more more crisis what is labor party has nothing mm -hmm. that we are even seeing so much but you are you not know, think of apc that they have the presidency First of all, so many of their members are not happy the way their appointments are being given out. Given out. It starts from there. Then he just mentioned the way the national, the so-called national chairman came to power now. Mm -hmm. It's just like single-handedly picked by the president coming here and remained here. Then look at what is just even the latest one that is even going on in the, within the APC now. Hmm. Uh, Erufai is moving around. Yes. You remember former the, governor Erufai of Kaduna yes, State? Yes. It's a very big factor mm -hmm. in APC. Mm -hmm. Now he's moving around. Yes. Nobody even know where that is. Uh, the last uh, time we uh, heard, we, we, we heard stories that he was um, moving he on was, to the SDP. To, yeah, but was, he said he was just to, meeting a friend. No, no, no he went, went to meet the S, S, SDP chairman. Mm -hmm. Then uh, look at even the latest one that came two days ago from mm -hmm. the present sitting governor, yes. Ubasani mm -hmm. of Kaduna State, saying he inherited so much debt from his predecessor he's still saying uh, and so he's still, and he's still going on so let in another one month from now if I, before the end of this there's April, a cold war between the a, a very serious cold war like what it's is not happening with again. It's, yeah. i mean it's, 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 it's hot hot and look at even the reply from uh bashi yes uh, 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 song mm -hmm. to the sitting governor all these are going to culminate into an implosion okay. in apc if not well managed because they have so much. You see, this one I say, a uh, president is calling them to Abuja. The president has just spoken. Uh, they come out and start telling the press, is the is the leader of the party. Let me tell you, it is not everything that the president says that goes down with some okay. of the people who are already agitated. In democracy, you allow people to come up with their 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 own grievances, their own ideas. Then everybody table it. Then let the best that will suit the people. Because remember, APC is not governing APC. Okay. APC is governing Nigerians. So whatever they feel is, is suit them as APC member may not suit you and I in this studio, Esther. So that is the reason why they must get feelers from the street, get feelers from all the states, 
to know exactly what the people are saying about them. Mm. In 2027, members of APC alone, if they vote APC, they may not win election. Mm. People must, they may have to pre, they have to compare to other persons, you know, who will buy into their policies and program and say they did well, probably in this past four years, last four years. Let us see if we can still retain them. If what is going on now, what is currently going on in Nigeria now, Esther, mm. if election takes place today in Nigeria and we don't have the kind of kangaroo eye neck and whatever we mm -hmm. had in 2023 mm -hmm. do you think they are going to win a local government they will not win now suddenly nigerians are crying of hunger mm -hmm. and uh, there is a city president from a political party now we're talking of hunger we're talking of insecurity we're talking of all this and then to go to an election in this manner so apc have so much in their kitty to even think of how to settle than even talking of other political parties. Patches. So what he is saying there is true. All if right. they don't settle their home appropriately before 2027 uh, general 27. election, they may have more problems. Already, they don't even have the, the majority have the, support from yes. the North like they did uh, no, in look, the remember, 2023 election. Remember just the movement of a department of uh, in from CBN to Lagos, to Lagos and, and, and Fan. Fan. To Lagos. Look at what even the APC the members... Serious disquiet. Look, at even, look at even their chief whip in the mm. house. Um, what's his name now? This man from Borono State uh, was saying that uh, uh, it has its own consequence in 2027. Let me remember his name now. Um, mm. he was, I mean, if people of this caliber in that kind of party should be saying all these things, you know what that means? Some of them are not even happy with the policies that their, pro, their, their political parties are dishing out. So, all these are going to form a way that even before the election, we are going to see many of but, the but, big wigs. But Mr. Elvis, the APC out. has a way of coming together when it's close to election. You recall even before the 2023 elections, there were a lot of people who were defecting from the P um, APC to the PDP, even PDP to the APC. And there was a serious internal wrangling. In fact, it almost culminated to the fact that maybe the APC may not win. But we saw a last-minute resolution. They have a way of coming together yes, when it's no, close to elections. There was really no last-minute resolution. What happened in 2023 was that some, some people were aggrieved. The G5 mm -hmm. were aggrieved in the uh, PDP. Okay. If the G5 did not tear the umbrella, as mm -hmm. we saw, the umbrella would have been able to contain everybody that... I mean, it would have even been a walkover. First of all, they said the, 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 the presidential candidate must go to the south. But we saw how it was snatched to the north. Mm -hmm. That already made some people to be aggrieved. And that, that kind of grievances was an advantage to APC. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because they picked their candidate from the south. So when they saw that, when they saw that, oh, this is already one of our number one first advantage. Let's key into this. Then they began to mobilize. They began to manipulate. All that went, came out with G5. You know, it's just like the voice of Esau and the hand of Jacob. Jacob. You know, those are some of the things you see in, in, in political parties. So at the end of the day, when they see there is already a little crack, they quickly fester in it and capitalize on it to make it worse, so that they cannot find you. Look at when when, uh, when uh, 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 President Tinubu went to, went to uh, campaign in, in Rivers, it was it didn't really get the the, the desired uh, me I mean uh, cooperation from the obedience and all that. But we knew he was already governing for him. He gave him the soft landing. But look at uh, Atikwa Baka. He could not even go to Rivers to campaign. You understand? So this was a crisis. Shei Makinde was just dealing, dealing with uh, PDP. But, you know, deep down, he was working the Ohio State for his brother. You know, uh, that he must come to the South. So this way, and they brought in uh, Autumn and others. At the end of the day, those little crises that the political party feel, you know, we can overcome. It doesn't really work like that when it comes to election because election is number. The the hugging election of um, uh, Tambua mm -hmm. uh, 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 and Atiku at that convention was what brought the problem to PDP. So we know Tambua stepped down at the last minute, mm -hmm. and when Atiku eventually got it, he went and hugging. So that was when I, others said, okay, this is already a plan by the Northern State that Northerners that they were going to snatch this uh, candidacy from the South. Mm. That's what was the reason they said. This time around, we want the candidacy to go to the south. So if it's not going to the south, we're going to pull out. So the G5 was a factor. It was not as if the APC did much magic. Mm -hmm. But that G5 was that a divided hole. When, it, when you have a divided hole, things, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't stand. It, 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 we can tell you and still remember of PDP. Mm -hmm. But is he doing the video of PDP? These are the issues. So this is why I want to say PDP should come out and tell Nigerians that they are not just a weekly. Those members that are, are doing anti-party anti activities, mm -hmm. you know, Suspend them 
or tell them leave my party let That's them true. know the number of people that they have in their party that buys into their idea that will help them to carry through their mission and vision you know against 2027 right, but if, they, if they come if they continue with this you know buying time mm -hmm. yeah, and, or and, being quiet and, or being quiet or trying to deal with people who are not really with you we are going to have more issues in 2027. Barrister let me come to you now. Uh, the reason why we're having this conversation is whether we like it or not, politics actually forms the landscape, all right, in every other sector that yes. encompasses, you know, the Nigerian polity. And it also forms the decision making for, you know, entrepreneurs and economists as well. Everywhere. Now, let, let, everywhere. Every aspect, yeah. now, here is the thing, right? We're already hearing a couple of back and forth between all these political parties. Nigerians now seem to be a little bit ruffled. They thought that the Labour Party would be different from the status quo of how p politicians are, but now it feels like the Labour Party is not different in that regard. Now, Party Banjo has sent a warning to President Bola Ahmed Tudu and told him that if you think overcompensating the Northerners would guarantee that in 2027 the APC will clinch the, the same, win, the or the, exactly that. Ask Jonathan what happened to him. He's telling him that it's not going to work. <laughs> However, he warned him that he should use this time to have an imprint make sure that he forms a legacy otherwise it will not be as he thought it worked for him in 2023 because we're already hearing sentiments from that particular region in fact they believe that they're the ones who ought to have won the elections or a, a candidate from their region ought to have won the elections now let's come back to the visit whereby nigeria is being considered as a country of serious intolerance especially religious intolerance and the federal government was really begging the united states to please see how to make sure that the house does not pass on that resolution is it about begging or about looking at steps through which this problem will be curbed if you go to the north and you're a christian you go to a place where a certain religion is more dominant you may not be given leverage in terms of persecution in terms of a lot of religious uh, rife and uh, you know what uh, what divisive sentiments or statements that occur the christian seems to take the brunt and now the house are saying the u.s is saying that they may place nigeria as a country of particular concern if that is not addressed so what would we say to that it, it, for me it's not a matter of begging it's because um, in certain issues, you don't need to beg. Mm. What you need to do is to go and correct the wrongs. Okay. You know, they have raised that allegation. You need to, like, uh, find a way to see the basis upon which they raise that allegation. Mm. Some of the facts might not be made known to you as a president. Some of the occurrences might not have been brought to your table. Not even be aware of certain things. They, they visited enabled. the president and made him know. It is sponsored no, no, by a particular I'm U.S. rep. The factors, Chris the, factors the, the marginalization, mm -hmm. occurrences, and things that happened in Nigeria mm -hmm. that made the American documentaries they have yes. might not have been exposed to the president. Okay. All you need to do is to look into all these things. How did they come across these uh, uh, you know, occurrences? What actually happened in Nigeria? Mm. The Plateau Massacre, the Benin exactly. Massacre. Imagination in the north, Mangu, Southern eh, Kaduna, mm -hmm. where you cannot, you know, preach the one that they killed uh, somebody in Abuja preaching mm -hmm. and nothing was and done. The kid, the kid in Sokoto, mm -hmm. kid in Sokoto the man was like, get out of my front, mm -hmm. don't stay here and be pouring water. Mm -hmm. They turned exactly. it into blasphemy, uh, blasphemy against uh, uh, Mohammed, uh, Mohammed and the rest of them. And how people, like, even the young girl, they killed in school. The young girl that was killed because he, she challenged Deborah. Deborah, Deborah. Deborah. Somebody yeah. wanted to like do certain things. But no, he began to shout and began to shout Allah, Allah, Allah And then before mm -hmm. you know it, the, the life of the young girl was taken away. And this is a, 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 an era where we are seeing Saudi Arabia, seeing UAE, people that actually own Islam, expanding the frontiers. Exactly. And they're being more incorporated. They're even become tourist countries. Trees. You know, more embracing more tolerance mm -hmm. you know more and then a country in nigeria here become reclusive you know you're becoming aggressive you are introducing wickedness making it to become aware of islam which is not because no matter however you are you cannot be more catholic than the pope, pope. so you can't practice islam more than saudi, saudi arabia, arabia people and, and they are united arab, arab emirates you're interpreting your own your own islamic practice out of your own wickedness out of your own evil mind and you are perpetuating and 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 then flooding the hearts of the young people with that wickedness in the name of islam 
that people cannot do things freely. Even employment in some states in the north, if mostly all this Muslim dominated north, mm -hmm. if you're not if you're a Christian there, you find it difficult to get jobs, you find it difficult to get employed, you find it difficult to work in certain places. Yes, yes. You find it difficult to own certain, you know, I a even socialize. Yes, and you can't even express yourself. Hmm. You are in the south here, pretty Christian dominated states here. You hmm. say talk, you can say talk about Islam, uh, express yourself. Islam say not, they will hmm. not, they will not say anything to you. Hmm. But in the north, there they restrict you. Even people you greet. I remember one of my friends that was a copper when we were serving there. He served in Bouch. He he was teaching in secondary school. After he has finished that, uh, you know, he's tutoring them. Some girls came out to like ask him further questions. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to like explain to them what's up. But some boys gathered and began to ask him, "Why are you talking to them?" So these are my students. Say, "No, you have. You cannot talk to them." It was an it was an escape for the guy to like nothing. And about you say, you "Cannot talk to them." And why would talk? What even happened to me? Mm -hmm. Because somebody was staying with me who happens to be my friend. They're all from the north and they're Muslims. And after when he said he wants to go and buy um, and do something, then one of them wanted to buy sugar again. I asked him whether I have change. 15 naira then. I said mm. I have change. I gave her that money. And the other guy came and saw the girl talking to me. Nothing was going just because she collected 15. I said, why would she collect that money from, from me? You. Don't she don't she know who I am? Mm. As in, she's not supposed to have any conversation with me. And I became very angry in Plato because I know Plato is like relatively mm -hmm. Christian dominated. I, I became very angry in the camp. I said, What kind of nonsense is that? We are here together. And we went to guy. I said, She said she wants to buy sugar again. And she has no change. She asked me, I gave her. And it was nothing. He said, Why would she talk to me? That don't she know who I am? So hmm. who am I? So you imagine that kind of mindset. Set. Okay. No, All right. Just Pastor, we so, so in the north, now. In the north, there are so many things going wrong. What a German government should do is to institute a panel. Or for my body to look into all these issues or allegations or facts by America and promise them that they will do something about, about it. it and then start doing something about it's, it's it. It's not about begging. No, it's not about begging. Start doing something about it. So Nigeria will be a place that people can, you know, flow freely. Hmm. They practice their religion. See, any religion you are trying to get people key. I told one of my Muslim friends. I said, look, why I will, if I will convert any religion, I will not convert to Islam. It was to make it that somebody it would be like out of force. If you know what you are preaching is okay, what you have is better. Find another way to get people convinced to buy, you know, buy into it. So many other religions don't force people, and people are there. Or threaten them. People are, people, people, are, people, are, people are there. Even secret societies. Have you ever seen them forcing people? Oh, people still true. join them. Well, we need but to when, take you make, calls, when you make Islam right? be like yeah. you are hiding something, you can't talk calls. to people, you can't embrace people, mm -hmm. you allow people to talk or interact. You come with by way of blasphemy and kill people. You are it's a, you are forcing people to worship. Your own uh, Messiah out of fear, and right. thoughts cannot get my 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 my, my your indulgence. My approval, yeah. All right, now it's time for us to take your recommendations and hear what you need to say concerning the conversation we've had. Please, when I call the phone lines, when you call, you just have a minute so we can also accommodate all the calls. The number is zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. That's the number to call. Hello. Hello, good evening, Esther Wachuku. Peter Osifo, how are you? Good evening. Happy Easter to you. Please, you have a minute. Go ahead. God bless you. My name is Peter Osifo. I'm calling from Abana, Jenny All right. Once more, I bid you happy Resurrection Day. Yes, I want to talk on Labour Party, Peter will be, and of course, obedience. Right. In my own opinion, and with all due respect, I want to establish the fact that the obedience it will be a very ethnocentric. Whenever you criticize anything, Peter will be. Not even Labour Party, but Peter will be himself. And by extension, Nam the Kali and the IPOB. Do that as it may. I want to talk on Peter will be again and then the crisis, crisis in quotes within the Labour Party at the moment. For me, I see it as a little more test for people be at the moment to so unite all the centrifugal forces mm -hmm. in the Labour Party. Okay. Otherwise, if he runs away, he will, I'm still saying it, that if he runs away from that, it will look as if it's a rolling stone that gathers no more. It's not Labour Party. At the initial, he has been supporting Barista Julius Abue in 
uh, the cases between Labour Party and of course the media Papa and Co. He has been supporting them. And I'm surprised too that Kenneth Okonpo is trying to bat, uh, bat better now. Because he and Peter B have been supporting Abure. But it seems they, ha they have seen the hazard on the wall mm. before this convention took place okay. in Anambra State. Maybe that is the reason why they shifted right. just to place the gallery. Right. So, all said and done, Peter B should try to unite all, right. all the people, all the centripetal forces in the Labour Party. This all is right. my for now. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that particular call. 0700-903-903-903. That is the number to call. Uh, let me read out your WhatsApp messages. Good evening, VOP. I am suspecting that this station, especially your program, and that of Precious, is unfair to the ruling party because all your analysts are always against the APC. You always bring somebody to come and defend Labour Party and no person to defend the ruling party. All right, so if you think that there is no one defending the ruling party, please call in, all right? We would like to hear from you. It's an open platform. There is no preference whatsoever to any uh, political party. We're talking about the parties that are actually embroiled in a serious crisis. And throughout this week, which of course is what the political spotlight sheds light on, the Labour Party is the one going through a lot. Now, did you hear anybody call President Tinubu? No. The people who have made statements or utterances right now in concerning Peter Obi and and the obedience are those who are working for the presidency. And so we're actually analyzing their statements and making it, you know, cross cross examine it in it in terms of reality. So call in, please. Let's hear from you. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Esther. Good evening. How are you? Name and location, please. Yes, I'm letter from Ejibu. All right, please go ahead. You have a minute. By and large, I want to sit categorically here. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not talking about Senegal's election. How do you select the, uh, the wanted the, the new president? The question now is, will the INEC over there do what INEC did there hmm. to get that president? The problem we have here, have here is the judiciary and the INEC. If they allow all the freedom, we know who our president is. Hmm. Then coming to the Labour Party crisis, I believe it's politically motivated. It is all aimed at the stabilizing political um, Labour Party towards 20, uh, 2027. Because they know the target. Mm. And I want to assure you that wherever they put Peter Obito, the masses will follow him there. Mm. We are the obedience and we are ready to follow him in anywhere he goes. Even if he goes to the devilish party, we will follow him there. Mm. Thank you and good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number to call. Please, please. This you can call in to get let us know what you think regardless of any opinion whatever affiliation political party affiliation you have Colin would like to hear your unbiased thoughts or objective based on the conversation we're having hello good evening hello good evening yes name and location please my name is mr 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 hello, hello? mr what mr Alka. Oh, your line is poor. Please kindly call back, all right? 0700 903 903 903. That's the number to call. Uh, you have a minute when you call. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Hello. Good evening, Mother Mesa. Thank you. Name and location, please. Hello. Good I can evening. hear you. Good evening. Name and location, please. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I can hear you. Go ahead. Name and location, please. All right, then. I'm visiting to your guest or. And my name is Nemeka from the Ejibo, please. All right, Nemeka, go ahead. Uh, my take goes to these those that we criticizing uh, Tito B. I'm telling them more they want to create Tito B to look like I'm most enemy to Nigeria. More they promote him. Because what happened at Senegal is a sign and, you know, a sign to every, every Nigerian politician. All right. To know that more you create, more you, you, you know, present a medallion like a setter, more people like him. Your son will be coming present and uh, the, the person that won a, a technical election. That is what they think him, be open to, uh, to the extent the, the people say, yes, he is setter, that's who we want. Right. Not that our god brother that will come and mess up the leadership. Hmm. So they should be careful and we, to continue what they are doing. Propaganda is not a leadership. That's hmm. what I want to tell them. Right, they continue with that. God bless you. Thank you.
Let me read some messages. Evening, Esther and guests. I want to give credit to Senegal in their presidential election that was free, fair, and credible. Selecting a 44-year-old tax collector from prison, there was no vote buying, agbaro intimidation, IMEC and police conspiracy, even cash and current judiciary. The EU observers didn't complain of rigging. It was a day election, unlike what we have here, where all this took place. That is why we are in this nightmare government. They have turned a uh, they have turned a secure nation to gangster paradise, turned the people to beggars and are margarine the midst of plenty. Corruption is the order of the day. The worst thing of all, Nigerians have to bear this nightmare in the next three years. In some months, it's a shame the worst of us is really the best of us. This is Dio from Fagba. Dio, uh, thank you so much for your message. Uh, of course, like I told you earlier, send your WhatsApp messages to 81 Zero eight one seven one seven five six double three eight. That is the WhatsApp number. If you're watching us on YouTube, you see the number right there on the screen. And this person says, I'm not a student of political science, but my common sense tells me not everyone in Labour Party would be like Peter Ruby or have his ideology. People would only go to where bread is being buttered. Most of those Labour Party senators are opportunists. They are desperados, just like Julius Apure, who has a lot of baggages hanging on his head. From forgery to misappropriation of funds, but this man is still fighting to remain chairman because of what he would gain. I think people are putting a lot of responsibility on Peter Ruby. Yes, he's the star boy of the party, but the man doesn't actually, the man doesn't own the party. So how do you expect him to kick some hungry and desperate people out of their position who have been in the party before him? Though silence is not goading, but I would have questioned Obi more if it was his own personal party. If he leaves the Labour Party, hypocrites would call him names. If he stays in the party, the Chatelains in the party would frustrate his 2027 presidential candidacy. And Esther, time has come for you guys to bar Peter Osifo from calling. A lot of complaints from other callers from the way he talks irresponsibly. Wow. <laughs> All right, Peter Osifo and every other person, I think, has a right to air their opinions. If whatever anybody calls to say does not butter you or it's not favorable to you, it doesn't mean that the person shouldn't be given an opportunity to air their views. All right, people's views don't have to be the same. All right, 0700 903 903 903. That is the number to call 0700 903 903 903. Let me take this call. Hello. Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello? 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 I've received your call or you're calling on WhatsApp. Hello? All right. I can't hear anything. Hello? All right. 0700 903 903 903. That is the number to call. 0700 903 903 903. And the WhatsApp number is 0817-1756-338. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to the political spotlight. Hello. Please kindly turn down the audio of your listening device. Hello. Turn down the audio of your listening device, please. Yes, I've done that. All right. Name and location. Good evening. Good evening. Name and location, please. Uh, my name is Abraham. All right. Abraham, location. Uh, I'm coming from Vegas. I did decide. All right. Go ahead. You have a minute. Um, I think uh, the people to put their house in order. Okay. Just like your analyst has said there. If the presidential election is take place, this week or even next week. I don't think they can win because, uh, you know, everybody is uh, to appreciate what is going on in the country now. Mm. No, they were saying that the dollar is uh, coming down. Uh, let it come down to where the net is or even go below. Hello. I can hear you. Hello? Go ahead. Continue. Hello. All right. I think. This person is somewhere quite noisy. 0700-903-903-903. That's the number to call. When you call in, please turn down the audio of your listening device. It's very important so we can hear you appropriately. And if you're in a noisy environment, kindly uh, stay out of that place so we can hear what you want to say. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the Political Spotlight. Hello? I can't hear the WhatsApp calls. I don't know why. I can't hear any calls from WhatsApp. Hello? Hello? 
please call 0700 903 903 903. If you call the WhatsApp, I can hear you. Only when you send messages that I can read it. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening, how are you? I'm fine. Name my location, please. This is Peter from the Shalom. All right, Peter, go ahead. Maybe forget that all these uh, all those statements the APC is making. Let me tell you, any party PKB goes now, mm. it is antecedent, it is antecedent. I mean, it, does, it doesn't have any problem. Even the level of the the level, the classic level does not affect it in any way. Let the election be held today, PKB has no problem. It's mm. a material that is always available for Nigerians to change this country. Nothing can change. Forget about this propaganda they are paying. Mm. What they are doing, they are trying to just make this image for them to have their way. But it's not possible. The, the hardship in the land has sharpened every man, every man, cause across all the nation. No, no tribalism again. Now, the, the property in the land has, made, has, has erased tribalism. Mm. Nothing like that. So people be the person. Don't bother yourself. Don't lose sleep. There's nothing about that. It doesn't right. have any problem. Right. Let the time come. Nigerians will know. All right, thank you. 0700 903 903 903. That's the number to call. 0700 903 903 And the WhatsApp number is 0817 175 6338. 0817 175 6338. If you're calling on WhatsApp, I can hear you. So please call on the normal call. Hello, welcome to the political spotlight. Hello, hello, hello. Good, yes, good, evening. good evening. What's your name? Name and location, please. My name is Mr. Amadi. Tell us Mr. Amadi, you have a minute. Go ahead, please. My regards go to students, students in the studio. All right, thank good you. Evening, well, sir. Well, sir. Good evening. You see, you know, FPC stands on false allegation hmm. and false information. So let me tell you, they made a huge mistake on this American Congress. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because mm-hmm. those people know in and out of this country what is happening. And they'll go there and start telling them lies again, upon lies. They do not know that the Americans know whatever that is done in Nigeria. One. Mm-hmm. Another one is this, about the uh, obese movement. Mm-hmm. You know, these people, all advice they try to do, give, like Peter Schiff and other people, yes. they will give it in a way that they, will, they are giving advice to. Uh, obedience at the level, but they, I will know them. We know them. I thank God that the Labour Party and the future of it, they have started pressing the party again. Mm. There's no problem over the voting. And let me assure you that, you know, you know, to who is the way he is. All right, 0700 903 903 903. That's the number to call. Uh, my take for this topic is that Peter O.B. should stay and make the party to become great. All right, you didn't tell us your name. Kindly put your name in there when you send your messages. 0700 903 903 903. If you're calling the WhatsApp number, I cannot hear you. So if I pick it, I can't hear what you want to say. So I think the WhatsApp number is for messages. So you call the number for us to hear what you want to say. Hello, welcome to the Political Spotlight. Hello. Name and location. Good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening, man. Yes, good evening. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. What's your name? Yes. Yes. My name is Obioma. Obioma, location, please. Calling from, calling from Ijesha. Ijesha, all right. You have a minute. Go ahead. Let me just tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's not in propaganda. People are tired. Let me tell you, it's Easter. So it's going to say, I'm going to say, it's Easter. It will be, whether they like them, you can go in and go back. It's easy to you need you need an one. Not people that thought they said so far that cannot achieve anything. Look at the economy, nothing going on. This is nothing going on, they better get the dance where they head down. How about take? Let's go ask me. I want the country to rest. All right, thank you. All right, I will take one final call so my analysts can give us their final rundown, then we'll wrap up the program. Zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to the political spotlight. Good What's evening. your name? My name is Ekong. I'm calling from uh, Ikibu. Your name is Ekong. Ekong. Ekong, yes. All right. Calling from Ikibu, right? Yeah. All right. Go ahead, please. You have a minute. I let you know that the Liberal Party, because they are talking about the Liberal Party, and when you have to prevent the party, the party, as far as I know, is going to be a great party. Because no matter whatever they say, the political party is going to come back, come back fully. 
understand me. All right. Okay. Thank you. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. All right. Your one minute is over. A lot of people calling on WhatsApp. I don't know. I think our technical team needs to work on uh, the calls on WhatsApp. I can hear you. All right. I'm so sorry. I can hear you. So I don't know. I'll just let the engineers know so they work on it, especially for Nigerians in diaspora who want to call in and be part of the conversation. They want to call the WhatsApp number, but I can't hear you. So I don't know what is wrong. So I think that is something that has to be rectified by the engineers. I hope they're listening. So they do something about it. All right. Finally, before we wrap up in a minute, Mr. Elvis, what do you have to say? Yeah, Nigerians have spoken. At least we heard from them mm-hmm. have spoken. The the PDP, the Labour Party, the APC. If we are talking about all the political parties, the political, we are talking about the interest of Nigerians. Mm-hmm. And as a result, those of us that are in the studio here, we are Nigerians. So we feed the post, both on the street, in the market, in the workplace, in our school fees and all. So we are here to actually let the people know that we follow policies of government. Right. Are, it's not for us. We are not pulling down any political party or pulling down any government. The one that we feel that will be beneficial to Nigeria is what we are doing here. So nobody should liken it that, oh, we are looking, we are pulling the APC right. to raise Labour Party or whatever. Mm-hmm. No. We are looking, dissecting the policies of government, the way that it will suit Nigeria, at least in this next three years of remaining in this administration. Mr. Barisajur, please, a minute. Uh, like, I'm, I'm speaking on what happened in the U.S. People should know that we have freedom of religion in Nigeria. Okay. And that freedom is for you to worship whatever you like. Mm-hmm. Whatever you like, the way you like it. Mm-hmm. In as much as it doesn't infringe another person's rights. Right. So for, for us to have a, a, a kind of um, freedom, a kind of power, a kind of authority mm-hmm. given to us by the provisions of our Constitution Chapter 4 mm-hmm. of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, people should not restrain anybody in any part of Nigeria on how they should practice their religion. religion. But then something happened in Kwara State you when some members of IFA, another program IFA is wanted up. to do mm-hmm. something and there are some Muslims in Kwara State, in Lori to be precise, kicked against IFA having kind of a, a procession in, a, 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 in, in the state. In, in, in the Lori. It's quite wrong. All right. Religion is by convention All right. and not by force. Thank you, Barrister Joe. Social media handle? Joe Moked in our platform. Elvis Ellie Mihele Elvis Ellie on all platforms. We've come to a roundup on the political spotlight this evening. My name is Esther Umachko. I've been your host. You can follow me on social media on X is Estic Media on YouTube. That's Esther Umachko. And of course on Instagram is Esther Umwaz, E S T A N W A Z. Facebook, Esther Umachko. And on YouTube is Estic Media. That's E S T I Q M E D I A. That is my YouTube channel. So, of course, VOP 90.3 FM, we try to have unbiased conversations. We try to ensure that we share the spotlight on issues across board, regardless of your p- particular affiliation. We try to ensure that all bases are covered. Do have yourself a beautiful Easter Sunday. Tomorrow, we kick off again. Happy Easter to you. <laughs>